Hey everybody, we have been busy getting our perennials, trees and shrubs ready for winter storage, or as we like to say, putting them to bed for the winter. And you may wonder, well, if all your plants are zone hardy, why do you need to do anything special with them? Because they'll survive a Michigan winter. But the fact is, when they're still in their nursery pots, uh, they don't get the insulation that they would if they were in the ground with all the soil around them. And that can really put them at risk and it can easily kill a plant if it gets too cold for them. So we have to take some special steps to overwinter our, uh, especially our shrubs and perennials. And well, we have trees too. So I guess everything that we have has to go through a special process uh, for the winter and usually uh, we have a different process this year we have this brand new greenhouse up and we're going to be using that for some of our winter storage normally we have an area up on the hill that we would put down some landscape fabric and then we would put all the plants in that area we give them a good watering then we turn them on their side and then we cover them with a frost blanket for the winter and that would protect them enough um, there were some disadvantages to that uh, but it did work well for us but this year because we have all this space in here we want to give it a try and uh, see how it works for us I think there's some really uh, great benefits for us with this uh, especially because we can monitor the moisture a little bit better in here and keep an eye on the plants and and I don't know it just overall just feels a little better for us uh, it's nice to be able to see everything because when it's covered for the winter you don't know what's going on underneath there and it can drive you a little crazy uh, anyway uh, what we're doing in here there's still a couple steps left like right now we have clear plastic uh, covering the greenhouse we have on order and it's been on order for a while now um, some white plastic that's going to cover up and it's going to be the second layer on this and most of our greenhouses have two layers of plastic um, but this one will have one clear and one white rather than both clear. And that might sound counterintuitive. Why would you have uh, clear plastic on a greenhouse? Well, for what we need it for over the winter, it's important that we not have all that sunlight coming in, uh, partly because you know we don't want all that heat getting in here because during the winter when it gets above freezing, it can easily get up to you know 55 degrees 60 degrees on a really sunny winter day it can get 70 plus degrees in the greenhouse and the problem with that is it's going to trick these plants into thinking that it's time to wake up and come out of dormancy and that's a big problem because if those uh, plants start sending out their leaves or their buds and then you know it's fine if the temperature stays up but if the temperature drops again those tender leaves and buds it's going to kill them and then if it doesn't kill the plant that plant does have to then wait a little while when the warms up again it uses its last bit of energy to push out some leaves and then it has to try to catch up and get enough energy to be able to start putting on new growth and that can put your plant back behind by one month two months and when you have a short growing season uh, you can have a year where the plant just doesn't look like it's doing anything so we don't want those plants uh, coming out of dormancy early so that's kind of one piece of it so I guess I'm going to show you around in here and tell you how we're setting this up uh, so that you get an idea of a strategy because these are some strategies that you can use let's say you have plants in containers whether they're nursery pots or some other kind of container now remember uh, a lot of your ceramic and terracotta plants aren't really weather safe uh, so the moisture could cause them to crack so that's usually not recommended there's you, you know it usually says in the pot if it can handle the winter but anyway uh, if you are storing some plants over the winter uh, you can use some of these kind of things that we use on a large scale on your small scale so let me show you at first glance it may look as though we just have rows and rows of shrubs in here but if you look a little more closely you'll notice that along the perimeter we've got different shrubs lining the edge than what we have in the rows and that's because we want our hardiest plants in the coldest parts of the greenhouse so at nighttime these edges along the walls get much colder than even just a couple feet in so by putting these really uh, hardy plants like um, nine barks by Burnham uh, we have also some uh, red twig dogwood uh, potentella a couple other plants as well um, by putting those there they're all zones two or three so they're much hardier hardier than some of the zone say four plants so we bring those in then also in these rows we've also made sure that in the center area if there's any zone five plants like this is a wajila the sunset that's a zone five I think over here there's some um, Father Gila, that's a uh, Father Gila, I can never say it quite right. Um, that over here, that's a zone five. I put it in there because all of these pots are going to help insulate it a little bit more. And it really is the roots that we're protecting more than anything in these plants because all the leaves and everything are going to come off. They're going to go dormant. We still have some nice color on some of the leaves, but those won't be lasting 
uh, much longer. So, you know, eventually they're all going to kind of look like this. And it's really those roots that we want to make sure that we keep them at the right temperature. So you might notice these little alleyways tucked in there. Now that part of that could be so we could access the plants, but for the winter we don't necessarily have to do that. That's really because we do have to monitor the moisture. We can't let these plants dry out, so when we're watering we need to be able to get in to each plant. And if I just did a solid wall, you don't really want to do the spray technique where you're just kind of you know, nonchalant and just spraying across the whole area. You're going to waste a lot of water. And we also don't want to get that much water on all the leaves in the middle of winter, that kind of thing. So by having these little alleyways, we can fill or we can walk in there and do what we need to do. Now, we do have like some of these arborvitae in here. And these are super zone hardy. So why do we have them in here? That's because of pests. Um, especially the rabbits and voles love going for our best arborvitae. They seem to have the ability to pick the most expensive ones and attack them. And if you're not familiar with voles, they're kind of a rat-like rodent. Uh, you don't normally see them. You may not even know that you have them on your property because they uh, burrow in. And usually they'll go into a pot, dig a little hole in there, make a nest, and then they kind of just, when they need more room, they just kind of munch on the roots. And it does a lot of damage to the plants. They also can, you know, chew on the edges of plants and do a lot of uh, issue, get, leave you with a lot of issues there. So we want to keep the rabbits and the uh, voles away from there. So we do have to do fencing around it. Now this is just our temporary fencing, but we do have fencing all the way around the building to keep all those uh, rabbits, voles, and anything else that might go after them out of there. So that's uh, another thing that we're doing. Now, if you're storing your own plants, you might not have the luxury of having zone two and zone three plants that you can use along the edges, but instead you could just pick up some mulch or bags of uh, compost or potting soil and just stack those up along the edges in front of your, you know, around your pots, and that'll simulate soil really well. It'll help uh, just give that insulation that those plants need, so not a bad idea. And then those are things that you can use next spring or next summer, uh, so you make sure you pick up something that you know you'll use. So if it's potting soil that you need in the uh, springtime for your annuals or if it's mulch to cover some part of the yard go ahead and get that and you just pack it right up against your pots and that's going to insulate them you're going to want to just make sure that it's stacked up as high or higher than the pots themselves so that it really is as if you're burying them in the ground now if you do have your plants uh, a couple things to note now the best thing to do would be to dig a hole and you can put the pot right in the hole and just bury it in there um, that would be the best way to you know kind of winter over your plants that you still have in pots uh, but that's not something that you can always do now you could keep it in an over in a covered area or in a garage or in a barn or something like that uh, but you do have to make sure that you're monitoring the moisture so you have to make sure that they don't dry out um, but you don't want to overwater them too because you don't want them to turn into a big block of ice so that just means you know they every I mean we usually check them once a month uh, during the winter uh, and you know just give them a little bit of water just enough so that there's just some moisture in the soil not that it's wet and not that it's damp it's not really damp to the touch it's just you know kind of the water kind of soaks in and it just keeps those uh, roots moist because it does need that moisture to protect itself as well um, and then also uh, you have to be careful about temperature because if it gets if it's too warm in there, uh, they're not. Some plants have to get that deep freeze. Uh, so you know if you have a heated garage, you have to be careful about all that stuff. And then also, it's important to note when you should take them out. So you want to make sure and take them out before uh, they start to bud because you want to get them outside uh, when. The weather's just you know milder so let's say in march you take them out and you just put them you know out there because uh, you know they're gonna you know it's not gonna get super cold we might have frost that's not a problem um, but it's not gonna get to that 10 below or 20 below uh mark and you know that's when the damage starts happening you know so you want to look at the zone uh and you can bring them outside at that point and they'll be fine uh it's also just a good idea to put them uh just somewhere outside so if you have a spot you know like kind of outside on the side of the house or something and it usually is better to give have them in a spot where there's some sun it's great if they can get some snow cover on them too um, that's going to provide them some moisture and some insulation so that always helps as well so don't be afraid to do that as well so there's a lot of different ways that you can winter over things in pots um, and again just be careful if you have terracotta or 
ceramic, those might not be a good idea to leave soil in there because that moisture when it expands can crack your pots and, and I don't want you breaking pots that you want to keep. So keep that in mind. And remember, I am specifically talking about perennials, trees, and shrubs. So if you're trying to winter over annuals, uh, that's a totally different story. Those definitely need much higher temperatures. Many of them, most of them, can't handle any kind of freeze. So I'm not talking about annuals here. Uh, so if you have caladiums or begonias or geraniums or anything like that, that's a little bit different story. We don't do that here. So uh, I don't want to even try to touch that, but you can find another video on YouTube to find out that stuff. Uh, what else do I need to tell you? Because I'm sure there's a couple other tips I could give you. Let me think for a minute and I'll come back. And actually, how about I give you a tour and I'm sure something will come to me. Uh, so I'll give you a little idea of what kind of stuff we have in here and how we kind of arranged it. So we opted to bring in some of these displayed apple trees. Uh, we didn't have to, but we just thought it would be a good idea uh, to do that. And uh, then we surrounded them. We're using as much space as possible, so we brought the boxwoods in. We have some of the hydrangea trees here and some of them in another spot. Again, there's some of that red twig dogwood in the back there. Those are so hardy here, um, and they're great insulation with more boxwood. Got the hollyberry, uh, a bunch of roses doing just fine. We started doing nine bark along the back there. Uh, here's some lilacs. You can see these are going to be the buds for next year. So it's uh, always great to see those. Um, and that's why we don't trim our lilacs this time of year. Um, then there's also, that's the privet right there with the green. It's still holding its leaves just beautifully. Um, it's really nice shrub as well. So uh, some Cotone Easter, let's see, a bunch of other mishmash of different plants here. The Wajilas, what else should I show you? Barberries, those are pretty easy. A lot of the viburnum. Again, we didn't trim our viburnum because we want to get the flowers on them. Uh, and there's, if you just look, just from here, you can probably spot uh, four different kinds of viburnum. There's so much variation in viburnum here. Uh, so just important for you to note. Again, we have these, let's see, spirea. Spirea never looks nice over the winter. Uh, some of the winter berries and some of the winter berries, especially the yellow ones, have loads of berries on them. And these are really young plants. Like we just planted these uh, this year. They're really small, maybe about three inches. And we do put the male and the female in there so that you'll get the berries on them. We also have the red ones as well, but that's called berry heavy gold. And then the smoke bush always gets such beautiful foliage in the fall. So we trimmed ours back a little bit uh, just because we like to keep them a little shorter because then you can enjoy that foliage because they have beautiful leaves even in the um, winter and in the spring. A uh, bunch of burning bushes. These are all elderberries over here. Let's see, the willows. Don't usually trim those because we can get the pussy willows. This is the nishiki willow. It's still have, and then also called the dappled willow. This is the one where in this early in the season, all the new growth is very pink and it's re it looks like it's flowering, but actually it's just the color of the leaves. This is a winter creeper. Uh, and this one actually is a zone five, but everybody has really good luck with it here. Um, but I did make sure to put it kind of in the middle. And so it's a little bit more protected. And then we have a bunch of the new uh, Illuminati series of mock orange as well. So there's tiny T tower. These are the ones that lost their leaves. They were in a colder greenhouse. And then there's uh, Illuminati Tower and then um, Illuminati Arch and these are brand new uh, so we haven't even sold those yet so they're going to be available next season and then we also have this new rhododendron called uh, Black Hat and you can see it's going to be doing really great next spring when those buds start coming out it's going to have some beautiful pink flowers on it and then these are all the Susky Gold that's a river birch I love that one that one's hardy to a zone two as well so that's why I have those lined up against the back as well so just you know really great mix of things in here now all these tips would work for trees that are in pots or grow bags but for our trees in, uh, in pots we do take them out into an area in the back and we actually bury them with soil we bury the pots uh, it actually fools the trees into thinking they're in the ground it maintains the moisture perfectly and we have excellent success with that so that's an entire another process and requires equipment and all that kind of stuff so even more involved than this but it's very effective um, that's also the reason why in the springtime we don't have all our trees right down here right away because there's a whole process to uh, kind of get those out of uh, winter storage as well uh, but anyway uh, this all this empty space behind me, that's probably going to be filled up with hydrangeas. I hope we have room. We have loads of hydrangeas. Uh, this year, the only way for us to be able to get some of the really new, exciting varieties was if we went and planted them ourselves. So we have loads of uh, hydrangeas that we planted that are going to be filling this space and they're going to be great next year. So we're looking forward to that. And I hope uh, these are some tips that you can use. And thanks for watching.